She's not what you'd expect. She's tough and feisty, but gentle and tender. She makes millions and gives millions to the poor. She cries, she laughs, she teaches, she comforts. This is The Danny Johnson Show. Welcome to The Danny Johnson Show. We are blessed that you decided to join us today. You know, there's a lot of myths out there for having a successful marriage. You know, you know that somehow a boy meets girl and everyone lives happily ever after and that, you know, there's never any conflict and everything is just so perfect. Well, we're kind of going to, you know, look be behind the veil today about the reality of marriage and really look at what some of the best advice that you've ever gotten for marriage, preparing you for marriage and even during were some of the biggest revelations you had that actually helped your marriage to do better because, um, yeah, I have yet to meet a perfect couple. Mm, nope, haven't met one yet. No, nope, but I have met a lot of couples who have struggles and they have conflict. And whenever I meet somebody that says, oh, no, we've never had a crossword before. Uh, you know, chances are they're usually lying. In fact, I've caught several people in those kinds of lies. Like, seriously, seriously. I mean, I've, I've known some of them for two decades and seen them have crosswords with each other. But we've never had a crossword with each other. Who are you trying to fool? Who are you trying to fool? Listen, here on the Danny Johnson Show, we redefine success, the status quo of success. Because our society is telling us what a successful marriage looks like, what successful finances look like, right? You know, you're not a good husband if you don't give your wife some big fancy house. You're not a good wife if you're not a 36, 24, 36. You're, you're not a good husband if your wife doesn't have a new car every couple of years. It's such a bunch of nonsense. You're not a successful couple if you don't have a boat and a jet ski. It's such a lie. None of that stuff has anything to do. In fact, all of those things, all that stuff actually can cause so much stress and pressure on a marriage that it causes the couple to fight and end up divorced. Over what? Over stuff. The stuff that society drove you and I to purchase, telling us this is what it takes to be successful. But here's the reality, friend. There's a price that gets paid and usually the husband and wife are the ones that pay it. Now listen, you might be saying right now, Danny, I am single. You know, this will not apply to me. Oh, yes, it does. And here's why. We're going to be talking about conflict. We're going to be talking about how to resolve it. And if you're single and want to get married, you need to know the truth about it. You need to know the reality before you get into that pool. You know what the temperature of it is. And this kind of conversation might be able to help you to decide what you really want in a marriage and what really is the truth about it and what kind of skills do you need to be successful at it. One of the greatest lies and myths that is out there is that you have to marry the right person. I'm here to tell you, you have to be the right person. Recently, I was in a discussion with somebody and this discussion was about, gosh, I've done it again. You know, I've already been married X amount of times and now, you know, I'm still this mess. You know, I, why do I keep getting myself into this situation? And here was the reality. I'm like, look, you're easily manipulated. And if you're easily manipulated, the manipulator will manipulate at new levels. And you have to set a boundary line of a communication of no manipulation. And don't let somebody get your goat. So the reality is if you're one that reacts easily to others in marriage or at work or on the freeway, if you react and get upset and you blow your top, some of us blow our top through our fingertips with text messaging. Some of us blow our top with our fist. Some of us blow our top with leaving. It's like, I'm leaving you. I'm out of here. I'm packing my bags. I'm leaving. All of this is a form of manipulation, all a form of control, unhealthy living circumstances. And we can all learn. So that's why I said you and I have to be the right person in order to have successful marriage. It's not finding the right person. It's you found it. It's you. So what skills do you need to be able to sustain yourself in honor and in respect and kindness and encouragement and edification of one another? Who do you have to become in order to be someone that another person actually wants to live with? I know I was not someone that anyone should have lived with in my early years of being married. Lord have mercy. I would not have wanted to be married to me. I was evil, terrible. I'll tell you more about that later. But regarding the phones, we asked some of our friends on Facebook what their comments were about best advice that they got in marriage, uh, things that they had to learn. What changes did they personally make 
to fix the set of circumstances that they were in. Because marriage is supposed to be until death does us part, right? I know we live in a society and a culture that says if it doesn't work, get out of it. I, I know that I, I've been married and divorced, okay? I was divorced. I, was, I got married after knowing a guy for seven days. He cheated twice, uh, ripped me off. I was embezzled. He's gone, okay? So biblically, I had the right to leave that marriage. Actually, he left the marriage. I didn't leave the marriage. He left the marriage um, and just moved in with some other chick. That was the way he went about things. If I was, if I was smart, I would not have married a guy that I knew for seven days. Duh. My second marriage and last <laughs> and only is to this fine gentleman right here, my husband Hans. Our marriage can be described as seasons of absolute passionate love and bliss. Oh my gosh. Separated by earthquakes, tsunamis, typhoons. Yeah, hurricanes. Sometimes all in the same day. Hopefully, if I don't forget, I've got to share with you a tip that we did last year that has totally revolutionized our marriage in this next season. But first, we're going to go over to London, the United Kingdom. We have Linda Potgeter on the line with us all the way from the UK. Wait to hear her beautiful accent. So, Linda, what did you have to change in your marriage in order to succeed in it? Hi, Danny. Hi, gorgeous. Hi. Um, gosh, I had to change a whole lot, and it had everything to do with me and not uh, all the praying I was doing to change my husband. <laughs> <laughs> Don't you um, find it funny that, because I, I did this whole pray for my husband thing about 24 years ago, 23 years ago, whatever it was, and I remember going, God, you have to change him. I know I was out of your will when I married him. I wasn't walking with you, so please get me out of this marriage. I hate him. You know, and he need, he doesn't do this, and he doesn't do that, and he doesn't do this. You need to change him. And then I heard the voice of the Lord speak to me and say, we're going to start with you first. What? What do I need to change? It's a rude awakening, isn't it, Linda? <laughs> oh, my goodness. Uh, you know, I, I was talking to a friend um, not long ago, Danny. I said to her, it kind of dawned on me. I had been praying to God for 30. I really believe in my God. He's amazing. But I was praying to him for 13 years to change my husband. His name is Jan. And then eventually I got with him and I said, you haven't answered any of those prayers. <laughs> and um, so it, it kind of, you know, I, I got to a point when he has answered so many of my prayers. And I got to a point where I thought, okay, there must be something in that. And it turns out it was me. Um, but, yeah, it... You know, the difference, Danny, I think, was I had spent, I had been married twice. I was married for the first time for four months, really, really good man, uh, but it went very wrong very quickly. And then when I married Jan uh, 13 years ago, also an excellent man, a, an amazing father, a, an excellent businessman, a good friend. In every area, I could see that he was good, except it just didn't seem like a good husband. Um, but... What I, I, what I learned was of all the marriage counseling we did, we went for six different rounds of counseling in 13 years. It actually didn't boil down to, well, you need to learn to communicate better. That was just not the problem. The problem was um, just getting over some stuff and understanding, you know, just getting over how I felt and understanding how I felt versus the facts of, of, of marriage. And I didn't have an understanding about marriage at all mm -hmm. when, I, when we entered into it. Yep. You know what's so interesting? There's something that's been coming to my gut as I've heard you talk. Um, and I know this to be true even in my life and so many clients that I've worked with. And it's this, that unless we change, we can't even see the change that has happened in others. And so God could actually be changing another person. But if we are not submitting ourselves to him, and allowing the refiner's fire to cut away the things that need to be cut away inside of us, yeah. then we can't even see the change or the improvements or the blessing of the man that God has given us. Or in the case with a man who has the same thing, that he's crying out to God saying, change my wife, change my wife. No, you first, baby. You first. Yeah. Because you'll never be able to appreciate her, value her, or even see what she is to you unless you change. And so, do you think that maybe you were blinded by things from your past that caused you not to see the value that you had in a husband? 
Oh, Danny, the short answer is yes. You know, I heard um, a woman by the, by the name of Charles Gamble say recently, I heard a podcast and she said, you can't hear the good news or see the good news until you get over your past blues. Yeah. And it was such a simple, lovely way of saying, uh, you know, we all have a story and, and some of us grow up in less than uh, ideal circumstances and some have idyllic circumstances, but in, nevertheless, we all have a story and we all have our feelings and our experiences. And I could not see before me uh, the man that I married to because I was so broken. I actually, it's such a coincidence. Um, two hours ago, I had an amazing conversation with a friend of mine, Julie, who is actually coming with me to First Steps to Success next weekend. And she, <laughs> she's the only one who knows me this well from 10 years ago. And she said, she's coming with me to the next DannyJohnson.com conference because she can't believe the difference in me and she wants a bit of that because she said I was such a broken, fragile, feisty, driven, competitive individual uh, that most people didn't know what to do with. I, I was broken, I was, mm -hmm. but you wouldn't say that on the outside. So <clears throat> I think my husband and I attracted one another uh, for the outside reasons. You know, we, yeah. we, we have this deep love for one another, but uh, Julie said to me, I remember you guys, every time we were together, you were sparring, you were competing, mm. you were positioning. It's not, it's as if you weren't even on the same team. Yeah. And unity was just not anything that we ever understood, Danny. Unity was never a word that we ever even considered yeah. to be part of marriage. Yeah. And that's so, hard um, to be married without unity. Yeah. Um, the, 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 the point of change for me came when I got into an environment which is, at first step success in, in, in February 2013, for the first time in my, in my second marriage, in my whole 41, then 41, now 43 years, I came across people who were honest enough, who were having the same challenges in marriage, who were open about it and saying, actually, it's not down to my communication skills, it's actually down to me working on me and you working on you. Yeah. And um, I suddenly found myself in a new environment with, very driven, very inspiring, very honest and, and um, encouraging people. And I didn't feel alone anymore. I used to feel like an absolute failure. Yes. I felt like the worst wife in the world. And that you're the oh, only good. one failing in that way, you know, that there's no one else has a marriage that is this bad and no one else could ever understand. And that's exactly what doubt and worry and unbelief will do to us. That's exactly what self-sabotage will do to us when we entertain those thoughts is isolate us so that we don't get the help that we need. And so I'm so blessed that you tapped into First Steps Success uh, two years ago and have had just a crazy transformation of your entire life. This is Danny Johnson. We'll continue with more after this. Linda believed a lie about her marriage and it ultimately caused her marriage to end. Are you believing the same lie? Find out next on The Danny Johnson Show. Do you dream about feeling more confident, more beautiful, more powerful, but instead you're that girl that never learned to do their makeup and now you feel lost in a sea of YouTube makeup tutorials. Or you're that new mom that can't get enough sleep at night and just wants to feel pretty again. Or the busy professional that wants to magnetize brand new clients and get more respect in the office. From the boardroom to the bedroom, xmhbeauty.com will help you. Our company has a proven track record of making beauty available on any budget, from celebrities to girls just like you and me. Our live classes, step-by-step -step tutorials, and insider secrets will have you standing out from the crowd. Go to xmhbeauty.com forward slash Danny today to get your free gift from us. That's xmhbeauty.com forward slash D-A-N-I. It's time for a checkup from the neck up. This is The Danny Johnson Show. Recently, um, I was asked to do a, uh, a marriage renewal, and this was a couple that had been married for 13 years, and on their 13th wedding anniversary, they wanted their, their marriage to be renewed. I've done lots of weddings and lots of renewals, but there's something just so unique about this one. And just so happens that uh, they were a couple from the UK, Jan and his beautiful wife, Linda Potgeter, from, uh, from London. And uh, they'd been coming to First Steps for a couple of years at that point and have had incredible success and growth in lots of different areas. But when I asked them why they wanted to do this, it was so interesting. And I wanted to bring it up because it's really important since we're talking about marriage today and marriage has everything to do with success in life. It does. If you're single, 
learn from today's show and learn from hearing the transparency and the reality and the challenges and the conflicts that married couples actually deal with. So you are prepared coming into it versus this stupid thing of rainbows, lilies, and butterflies. I mean, because that's a lie. I mean, it's a lottery ticket out there with the way society is selling us success in marriage. It's marrying the right person. You have to become the right person. You have to become the right com communicator. You have to be one that wants to be unified with another person. And it means that two people become one flesh. That means a completely different entity altogether. That means a part of you is, is not going to be the same and a part of uh, her or him is not going to be the same, depending on, obviously, if you're the husband or if you're the wife. You're, 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 a part of you is going to, to mold and be shaped into something new. But I've got Linda on the phone. She called in first to share her, her story about some things that she had to learn for herself. But this was profound. Linda, the reason why you wanted to renew your vows on your 13th wedding anniversary, which is just a few months ago, was for what reason? Your first marriage, you got married where? And what was it? Um... Well, Danny, I got married in South Africa. So I'm, I'm, I was born and raised in South Africa. And uh, I dated a guy, a very, very good man for six years. Um, very tumultuous relationship. But I, I was married to my career, you know, unbeknown mm -hmm. to me and unbeknown to him. And so um, I guess a step back would be to say I grew up in very um, kind of violent homes. And so I think un unconsciously I... Subconsciously, I expected marriage to be a battlefield, and it really was. I, but I, I determined that I was going to make this work, that I was going to be the first generation of non-divorce, that I was going to, you know, be the success factor. And boy, I was, <laughs> I was wrong. Four months later, uh, he, a couple of things happened, and uh, I, I filed for divorce. And I was, I was absolutely shattered, just knowing that I was just the next statistics in, in, in my life, in my, in my family. Because um, you can't do it on your own, no matter what. You cannot do marriage by yourself, period. You need yeah. God. So when you married Jan 13 years ago, you guys got married in a courthouse and you realized that you had a contract. And that's actually what was spoken over the two of you when you got married, that it was a contract versus yeah. what? Well, that's the crazy thing is, we uh, haven't had no understanding, really, of, you know, we both loved God and weren't really, absolutely, we're not walking a, a life, you know, out with Him. But we, just, we had to choose between using our money to emigrate to the UK or using our money to get, you know, this big flashy wedding. So we decided we want to uh, build a business and a life in, in Europe and we want to travel the world. So we went into a little office. Um, we, we left our big uh, corporate business, um, our company, on the, on, on the Friday. We went down, got married into a contract it was a legal this whole jurisdiction around um there's a legality and nothing else god had nothing to do with it mm -hmm. and we signed this contract and i remember going back to johannesburg feeling really empty and kind of very very just sad and disappointed and and that's how we started our marriage i never shared that with my husband i didn't want him to be impacted by how wow. i felt and then when we got with um it, it, it was it was in August 2012, actually. I was attending the wedding of a good friend of mine, um, Anna and Max, in, in London. And there was a guy by the name of Clint Walter from Durban, South Africa. And he was the first person that I'd ever heard speaking about the difference between contract mm -hmm. versus covenant. Yep. And Jan and I, I was about six months pregnant at the time. And I thought I was just being very emotional. And, and I felt I, I was crying. But then yeah. I looked and my husband who I've seen crying maybe twice in my life, was crying. Yeah. And um, There's a huge difference between a contract and a covenant. And a covenant is for life. A covenant, even biblically, it took blood to actually seal that co covenant. But a contract is if it doesn't, then no problem. If it doesn't work, then we break the contract. But covenants cannot be broken. And that's what she brought, her and her husband brought to me saying, we, when we got married 13 years ago, we got married in an office and we signed a contract. And even the person that did it just say, hey, if this doesn't work, then this. And if this doesn't, it was completely conditional. But marriage cannot be conditional if it's going to succeed. You have to go completely all in and know that a until death do us part. So either we have to die to our own selves in order for this to be able to work and we get transformed into a new image as a couple instead of being who we were. This is Danny Johnson. We'll continue with more after this. So what is success? A big house, a big title, a big fat paycheck? Danny Johnson has had them all and you need to hear what she discovered when she had them. 
The whole story of how I went from homeless to millions is right here in this book, First Steps to Wealth. I'd love to give you a free copy of this book. Just dial 888-757-8880. You can get your free copy of this book. It's like a real book, my friend. You can get an ebook copy for free right now, or if you'd like to pay the shipping to get this $15 book to your house, I'd be happy to send it to you. 888-757-8880. Get your copy of First Steps to Wealth today and begin on a brand new path of some great success. Helping you become all you were meant to be. This is The Danny Johnson Show. Danny, I married the wrong person. Oh, my friend, that is the voice of 98% of the population. My goodness, it's shocking. 98% of the population has been sold such a lie, a complete myth about marriage, that it's about finding the right person. I used to believe that and that led me into my first failure in marriage where I thought I found the right person and then when it didn't work out, it didn't work out. And in a, an adult, two adulterous affairs that my husband had, not to mention all kinds of financial disgusting mess that I ended up homeless. Uh, and the bottom line is, is I made the mistake of marrying somebody that I should have never married. And I wasn't the right person to be married to, no question. I needed to work on myself. And so what I've seen even in my marriage with Hans, that we have been together for 24 years. Um, yeah, 24 years having babies together. We have five children, seven grandchildren. I had a daughter from... Um, from high school. <laughs> yes, I was a pregnant team. I've been every kind of statistic you could imagine. Certainly not set up for success at all. I certainly, my upbringing did not train me to be a good wife. It didn't train me to be a good mother. My, my upbringing didn't train me to be a business person or to be sound financially. It didn't train me to be emotionally sound, mentally sound. Should be in a mental hospital based on the childhood that I had. I'm so very, very grateful to my creator Wow, that he, through his wisdom, knowledge, and understanding, has taught me through many different people on this thing called marriage and how to work through these things. And, and it really, it's about this, is that you're never perfect. It is that you that each season of your life, you get the training and mentorship that you need to be able to move past that season. You know, we did a really good job in our early years with all the babies, right? My husband and I worked really, to, really well together as a team. And we worked really well together with our teens. Um, and we found a good stride there. I homeschooled the kids, things of that nature. Sure, there could have been things that were done very, very differently that if we were to do it all over again, we would have done it different. Um, but uh, where we found like massive, like, ah, <laughs> where neither one of us were equipped to handle is when the kids began to leave, get married and move out. Wow. We have two still left in the house. One just came back, but I mean, she's in the process of building her own home uh, with her six kids and her husband. But uh, this was like, uncharted territory. Like, how do we do this? Like this shift of kids becoming adults and becoming married and having babies was like a foreign world to us. And that's where he and I didn't work really well together at all. We, we flopped. We really, really flopped. And we had to look for new training. We had to get people that actually could equip us with the right wisdom and knowledge to help us, to help our hearts move through this almost feeling of abandonment, being abandoned by our kids, which is kind of how my husband felt. Um, we had differences of how we felt uh, during that time. I was super excited. Um, but, there, but I didn't react well to whatever my husband was going through, which meant I wasn't the right person to stand by him the way I should have or could have. And uh, yeah, there's a lot of things that we could have done different. We could do another show about that another time, but which I'm going to talk about towards the end, about one thing that made a major difference and, and really, 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 really brought some restoration in a place that we desperately needed it. But we're going to the phones because we asked a question to our friends on Facebook. And by the way, if you haven't joined us on Facebook yet, what are you waiting for? Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter, Danny Johnson Live, D-A-N-I Johnson Live. Uh, meet us there. There's over 300,000 friends that all gather. It's an amazing community of people that will encourage you, that will spur you on, that will believe in you, that post incredible things. Our, our clients post some amazing wisdom on that page and, and, and everyone is just amazing. There's a few jerks out there, don't get me wrong, but all in all, we make sure and to police that, that page and make sure that the jerks stay away, but that the people that are, that are awesome um, actually remain. But get over there. Be encouraged by that page. We think you will like it. Um, but we got Ivan. We asked her friends on Facebook um, if they had any questions about this and what they would comment, what things that they've learned in the past that helped them. So we've got some people that are on the phone right now with us, which is kind of fun to, to talk to the people that we've seen on Facebook. Um, so Ivan from Phoenix, Arizona, welcome to the show. What are your comments concerning marriage that have helped you? 
Well, Danny, um, one of the things that I really have to say, um, I, ha- I uh, had a struggle a lot throughout my life. I didn't even realize that I even had a problem. Was just the ability to, to listen. I always suffered from people, from not remembering people's names, right? So just yes. the simple training of going to first steps or even to dynasty, both of those. I wish I would have had that training back when I was a kid, yeah. you know, just be able to learn that kind of stuff. And so yep. one of the greatest things that I learned was just the ability to be able to listen, like it strengthened our marriage tremendously. Yes. I didn't realize how much of a problem I was causing by the ability of not to listen. Like I, I'm, I know I frustrated my wife several times, mm-hmm. but like we, we like marriage is a, is, is, is a good, good, good hard work. You have to work at it. Yes. That's simple. That's one of the things that I learned. And so you have to work as a team. And it's one of the things when you start having kids, you start realizing you guys, you guys have to learn how to communicate. And I, I'm still uh, something I still learn today, even at work, mm-hmm. how to be a good how how to be a good communicator. Yeah. So the hardest thing that I've had to learn was just to listen, not to wait to speak. Yes. So it was it was a tremendous tremendous eye opening experience. You know, the, I think we've gone the first steps. Five or seven times. I don't remember how many wow. but it's been it's been transformative. Just yeah. in, the, in the realm of even teaching our children how to do that. That's something yeah. that we get a lot of comments on for our kids hmm. with our, within our relationship. How can you guys have four kids? A lot of people are like, oh, I don't have kids. I just have a dog mm. or whatever. And so I know I don't know their situations, but I know ours. It was there's you know the listening and then also forgiveness. Yeah, that was a, that was a huge thing. Uh, just be able to say, look, hey, you, you know, I, I screwed up on this or whatever. You know, I forgive you. you know, this is something we've done with uh, training our kids with uh, um, raising up the next generation for success. Yes. Um, that's one of the good things we've been it, implemented in our house. And I can't tell you how many, how that has just transformed, uh, the listening part, just transformed our, my life and our lives and our family, be able to work as a team. Because it is, as I forget who the, previous uh caller was they had it they were talking about like a business contract yes um it, it you know like covenant it's yeah. you, you got to have the whole you got to have the whole team work together otherwise it all falls apart yeah so people like i don't know how you guys have four kids how you guys make it work i'm like well you got to work at it it's not, it's yeah. not something easy yeah you know there's you support one and the other and then your wife supports you and yeah you go back and forth. Yeah. There's, there's no other way around it. You don't just give up just because it's hard. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So that was, that was one of the greatest things that I learned. And I know even in my house, um, there was talk before my mom got sick about my, my parents getting divorced. It mm. never came to that. But I didn't want to have big arguments like that. Yeah. I, didn't, I wanted to make sure that we could have a team that worked together. And I know my wife is very good at what she does mm. in regards to that. And she's the one who brought, brought me to you to do the first steps to success and whatnot. So it was uh, very transformative, and I, I couldn't be more blessed wow. to be able to have my ears opened up in that regard. Man, that's amazing. So, Ivan, first of all, I appreciate your humility. That's a, that's a solid man. Do you know what I mean? Your transparency um, to know, like, whoa, I was messing that up, and that was exasperating my wife and my kids. And so, again, there it is. It all boils down to we have to change ourselves. We can't focus on trying to change someone else. And i got to talk about this, this forgiveness thing, because a lot of times people think that that forgiveness in marriage just needs to be used for big things. Do you know what I mean? That it's like, okay, Mm -hmm. something catastrophic, then I have to forgive him. But just even last night, okay, we, my husband and myself and my son were in a conversation and, you know, something came out of my husband, you know, that was not sideways, but maybe I took it that way. Maybe I perceived something and I had to just go, I'm going to decide to believe that my husband is for me and he would never intentionally try to say something or do something that was bad for me. And that's where it takes for us husbands and wives, we have to choose to believe we're on the same team instead of choosing to believe that we're against one another. And so I just right away just went, you know what, I I forgive whatever that comment was or whatever that remark was, whatever it was, I choose not to receive it and I choose not to, to like stew over it 
Do you know what I mean? And think about it and think about it. And he shouldn't. And that's just like what he did back in 2005. And you know what I mean? All that stuff just creates all that turmoil. So we have to live in that spirit of forgiveness for the sake of the team. You know what I mean? It's like this. If if I even you and I played basketball and we played on a basketball team, there's a good chance that I'm not going to make 100% of the shots that I throw up there. Okay, I might be really good. I might be 80% from the from the sideline, but the reality is 20% of the time I'm going to screw it up, which means 20% of the time I might make you mad when I screw up. And so we, as a team, we have to go, dude, I've screwed up 20% of the time too. Good on you, mate. Good job anyway. Shake it off and let forgiveness flow. That if somebody had a bad day, if somebody didn't respond, you know, in the utmost amount of kindness and love and and edification, we have got to be willing to go, I've been there, I've done that, and I'm going to extend kindness and forgiveness and mercy and grace, knowing that my husband is for me. He is not against me. We are on the same team, and together we're gonna cross the finish line. There were so many years, Ivan, that I believed the opposite of that, and it was destructive in my relationship. Absolutely destructive. He's against me. He's always against me. He never agrees with me. And all that did was create poison for the two of us to try to live in. Such a joke. This is Danny Johnson. We'll continue with more after this. If you and your spouse have fallen out of love, stay tuned to The Danny Johnson Show. You want to succeed, right? But you do not want to fail God at the same time. There is a way to succeed from a biblical perspective, and it's far greater than anything you could ever imagine. Over 500 scriptures I studied to study money, everything that the Bible said about money. That's in the first couple chapters of Spirit Driven Success, not to mention leadership, working with people, growing a career, being used mightily in the marketplace, which is where Abraham God used him in the marketplace. And Joseph, God used him in the marketplace. Moses, God used him in the marketplace. Daniel, Solomon, really all of the greats of faith, most of the greats of faith throughout the Bible, they all were in the marketplace. And God wants to show you how you can be used mightily by him in the marketplace. Right here, Spirit Driven Success is where all of my notes are on how you can do that. 888-757-8880. Again, 888-757-8880. Get your copy of Spirit Driven Success today. This is The Danny Johnson Show. Oh, you know, we're just not in love anymore. You know, we're just not. We were then, we were young, we were stupid, but now we're just not in love anymore. Listen, friend, that's another myth that so much of the population believes that you just fall out of love. No, love takes effort. Love takes time. Love takes investment. If you look at in the courting part of your life, you put in so much time, so much effort, so much listening, being interested in things you were never interested in before because you were making an effort to build love. There was so much honor. There was so much respect. You didn't care if they said something smart. You just wanted to hear them breathe. And all of a sudden you get married and now it's like, psh, you no longer make the investment anymore. You no longer put that time in and listening so very carefully even to just them breathing. You don't allow yourself to get excited about them anymore. Why? Because there's fights, there's arguments, there's disagreements, there's things that you're not on the same page with. And now you have a different set of standards once you're married that you try to change each other to be like one another instead of the two of you being conformed into one flesh, a completely different entity altogether called marriage. We're talking about that today and we're talking about the best advice that you have ever received. We've got Amanda here ready to share the best advice she ever received in marriage. Amanda Snyder from Houston, Texas, welcome to the show. Hi, Danny. Hi, share with us the best advice you ever got preparing you for marriage. Well, preparing us for marriage, I remember um, the pastor that the, did the ceremony. He said, um, never give up. Never give up on each other. You are stuck with each other. And um, and, and never use, you know, the word divorce. Yeah. So, uh, you know, we try our best. We have a very, very difficult situations through, uh, through the years. we almost 11 years married. And it was a struggle most of the time. We struggled with communication, we struggled with issues, money, um, time, so many things. And I, one day I said, you know what, I don't love him anymore. I uh, just want to get divorced. Hmm. And, um, and so, but the good thing is um, my husband always is willing to, he's always willing to 
to learn, willing to do better. So I think that that has made a big, a big impact in our marriage, that he's willing to do the, his best. Yeah. And uh, so we asked for help. <laughs> yes. And we went to counseling, and we seek the help of our pastors. And uh, But I, I, as, as you were saying, um, there is a season. So we go through yes. seasons where things are better and things are worse. And it's important to find that encouragement from people who have been successful mm-hmm. that help us go through those seasons. Yes. So, Yes. Yeah, I thought, yeah. Isn't that so amazing, Amelia, that uh, you said that seasons are better, some are for worse. Those are the vows that we all took for better and for worse, in sickness and in health, for richer and in poor, right? But oh, we only want to be in the rich. We only want to be in the better. We only want to be in the health. (laughs) Life is not just a better... Flipping roses, buddy. It just doesn't work that way. And so we have to, in the seasons of worse, the seasons of bad health, and the season of lack financially, that's the those are the seasons that are to strengthen us, to have us to come together, to unify, to quit fighting one another and fight the problems instead. I love it. I love it. I love it. Okay, we've got Ivan Scott from I mean sorry, <laughs> Lawrence Scott from Canada. Uh, welcome to the show. Hi, Danny. Hi. So what kind of expectations, Lawrence, did you have in the beginning, either before you got married in the beginning of your marriage? Well, well, sadly to say, Danny, I I had uh, some very large assumptions, uh, basically because we were both Christians. <laughs> uh, I just assumed, you know, it all worked out, and whatever problems we were going to face, you know, uh, we would just be finding Jesus there and everything would work out. <laughs> um, I assumed that, you know... Uh, we'd be making a lot of love and having fun all the time and just conquering the world together. So, um. <coughs> Hold on, <laughs> because you added a whole other layer. I'm so sorry. I've been chuckling ever since you said, because we were Christians, I had a lot of big expectations. And the picture that I got was, were you thinking you were marrying the female version of Jesus? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, I was. And, and I thought I was like the, the male Jesus, so I was going to be perfect. <laughs> <laughs> I have to laugh. <laughs> I think I could write a chapter and a book on that one right there. Talk about such a big facade, right? Wow. Yeah, and the sad thing is, though, Dan, it, it went on for like five years of um, just warring and fighting with each <laughs> other and... I, I just, uh, my communication sucked. I, I didn't grow up in a home where I got to see how a man is supposed to love his bride. Oh, yeah. And, and uh, you know, and through it all, I, I, you know, I was just so egotistical. I, I actually w- was finding scriptures and, and uh, proving my wife wrong and, you know, blame, I was blaming her for everything. And, and uh, it took, it actually took me a long time to realize what a fool I'd been, you know, and and a lot of the a lot of the the damage I caused mm. right in the beginning, you know, we're still working through it. Yeah. So it's uh, I wish I could go back and do it again, but that's that's what happened, and and this is where we're at. Mm-hmm. So what changed? Because you said that you had to realize some things. What did what did you realize, and what have you changed to make it better? Well, things really turned around when we attended uh, a First Steps to Success. Hmm. Um, we actually, I think it was gems or just, we started to honor each other and a lot of the fighting stopped, um, a lot of the arguing, um, you know, it, 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 got, it got a lot less. That's so but awesome. I can say that even that, uh, I went to a First Steps and a Dynasty and I didn't think about returning so that mindset that i had was very very ingrained in me so i figured because i went to one first steps in a dynasty i got it all gonna be figured out and uh, <laughs> not just the marriage but business and everything in life i thought i was going right. to succeed so my it, wife um she's just she's been very patient and 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 loving towards me mm-hmm. and even through my worst um, she kept you know hanging on and, and believing that hmm. sometime the you know the real me would show up <laughs> yeah the man she married um, I, re- I remember one event we went to um she came back all excited about about the ego and tossing the ego and i was like 
yeah, I heard that. Like, what's the big deal? <laughs> <laughs> so I, I'm just I'm just such a slow learner, and I'm really learning that you know, my wife is a gift. She has a lot of discernment, and she has so much to offer. We're very equal, and and I haven't treated her like that for a long time, and. And right now we're in a, a very difficult season in our marriage, mm-hmm. and I can say that we would definitely be warring still right now if, you know, I didn't actually start learning some things that, that you were teaching at your events. Wow. And, wow. and I'm very grateful because, you know, I have hope um, and faith and belief in, in something much better. And, uh, you know, like, we, we're both going through a lot of healing. And, yes. And uh, it's you know, I'm I'm trusting God and believing for the best. Yes. And I think I think uh, I'm learning to have patience, which is another thing that mm-hmm. I keep thinking. You know, once I hear something or figure something out that it's done, you, no. you actually have to walk through it. <laughs> yes, you <Yeah>. do. <laughs> it's that same lottery mentality, Lawrence. Is what yeah. that is. It's a lottery mentality. That, it's a poverty mentality that has. Do you have to renounce it? You have to cancel its powers in your life. Lawrence, I want you to stay on the line because uh, we have to take a short break, but there's two things I want to share with you uh, that I think is going to really help not only myself, you, but everybody else who happens to be listening. This is Danny Johnson. We'll continue with more right after this. Danny will be back with more expert business, money, and relationship advice to help you live the uncommon life. This is The Danny Johnson Show. This is your chance. This is your shot. Get your copy of War on Debt right now. There's one waiting for you that has your family's name on it. And inside that package is freedom. Your freedom, your family's freedom is on the inside of that package. All you have to do is open it up, press play, and start applying what I teach you in this program. 888-757-8880. You and I are going to help your family become completely debt-free in the next five to seven years. Just imagine how that's going to feel. For families in Santa Pancha, Nicaragua, life is filled with fear and struggle. They don't have enough food for their kids, clean water is hard to find, and they're living in a decrepit, unsafe hovel on top of mining tunnels that could explode and sink at any moment. But a miracle is in the making, and you can be a part of transforming this village. Go to kingsransom.org and click on Santa Pancha to see how you can help. That's kingsransom.org, kingsransom.org, and click on Santa Pancha. It's time to take on a whole new mindset. This is The Danny Johnson Show. At the beginning of the show, I told you that I was going to share something that helped to bring my husband and I through a really crazy season that we were going through. There's two things I want to share with you. First of all, we had to come to this place where, well, first of all, in this, in the beginning of our, uh, our marriage was really, really bad. And then we got some training from some people that helped us. And those skills helped us for a lot of years. And then we came to a different season where our kids were growing up, getting married and having kids. And there, it, that pushed all kinds of wild stuff in the two of us. Um, and, and so in that, we realized like we are not equipped to handle this season of our life. We need new skills to walk us through this part of our life. We're, we, the old skills of raising babies doesn't work for these adult children that are in our life who are getting married to people and making financial decisions and other kinds of decisions. And so we didn't handle very well. Um, but uh, there, there was a lot of uh, striving that had popped up inside of our marriage and some from, some, from stuff from years ago that, that the both of us need to work through. And uh, I approached my husband a year ago, October, about a calendar. <clears throat> and I told him, I said, the Bible says that we are to be kind to one another. It says that we are to encourage one another as though it is, if it is still called today, we're supposed to encourage one another. You're a one another. I'm a one another. The Bible also says that we are supposed to edify each other. I have failed in this place. I feel like I can improve in this place. I'm going to ask you that you would join me in a calendar that, that every day that we are kind to each other, every day that we encourage each other, every day that we edify each other, every day that we do not keep a record of wrong, every day that we do not strive, not argue, that we choose not to walk in our flesh, but that we choose to walk in the spirit of the most high God. I say we put an X on the 
calendar. I'll put one line one way, you put a line the other way. This is around October 25th um, of 2014. We started that calendar and it was profound. And so anytime, and I said, anytime that we mess up, we actually call for a reset. Just like in our cell phones, there's a reset button. It completely erases everything that's in the phone. That's what I'm gonna ask that we do. So if we mess up, we call for a, a reset, and when we, we mark it on the calendar. For how many hours that we screwed up, we put that in the calendar, a little squiggly line. So check it out. <clears throat> we started this and we come to find out that we only actually had little myths, small little moments of little squiggly lines, like once a month, that was it. Where prior to that, we felt <clears throat> we were fighting all the time. And that was a lie that was coming into our head. Next, uh, what happened is we just now celebrated 120 eight days, 128 days without a single argument, without any striving, with no myth, 128 days of total kindness, encouragement, edification. And in those 128 days, there has been many opportunities, many stressful things that have come in, decisions that need to be made, changes that have happened in the family, where we could have been coming against each other, but instead, because we've made this covenant, kindness, encouragement, and love, that is what's changed it. The other thing, I have to share with you another time. We're out of time. Thanks so much for joining us today. We'll post it on Facebook. Thanks for joining us today. God bless you. Have an awesome day on purpose. Bye-bye. If this episode was an encouragement to you, go to dannyjohnson.com and share it with your friends now. You never know who else needs to hear it. Hi, welcome to the Danny Johnson YouTube channel. We're super excited to have you here. And every single week, we're gonna make sure that you get awesome videos for your business, career, making more money, saving money, annihilating your debt, as well as helping you to handle those really tough problems that you have with people at home, as well as at work, and taking those really good relationships you already have and causing them to flourish and grow. All you have to do is click that subscribe button right down here. Click that and you'll be subscribed to an amazing community of people as well as some great videos that will help to improve your life. Thanks so much for being here. Subscribe now would be good. Just click it. I know you can see it. It's somewhere down here. Okay, talk to you later. Bye.